Hello and welcome again. This is the third part of the introduction to modern cryptography. And so as we saw in the previous examples, uh, this is the setup we have. Uh, we have two parties, Alice uh, and Bob, that want to communicate. And they're gonna communicate through an insecure channel. And they're gonna use a couple of things. One is the encryption algorithm that is gonna transform the any plain text to into a cipher text using a key. So we're gonna use a key here for the uh, for the encryption. It's a key, and you're also gonna use a key for the decryption. And so, of course, the key is only known to Bob and Alice. And as always, uh, Eve is listening to that channel. So Eve is right here. This is Eve. Now, one important question, and this is a very important question, is. Uh, should we make the algorithms uh, E of and D public or private? So what I mean by that is, suppose we are we want to create some crypto system. Uh, do we publish this encryption and decryption? I don't mean the keys. The keys are should be private. I mean the algorithms, the inner workings of the algorithm uh, of encryption and the inner workings of the algorithm of decryption. Should we make those uh, public or private? Um, if you think about it for a little bit, uh, most of you would probably think that it's better to keep them private, right? Uh, actually, it's the opposite. So why is that? So why should we keep uh, the algorithms public? Again, I'm not talking about the keys, I'm talking about the inner workings of these algorithms or the setup that we have here, not the key. Um, so suppose, for example, I give you this assignment, and of course, this is just uh, not a real assignment. I tell you to sign an encryption and decryption algorithm um, by yourself. And so I give you, let's say, for example, a week or so. So you might decide maybe you want to... Um, use the ciphers that you have. For example, you can maybe use the Caesar cipher and then you apply the substitution and then you do tabular transposition and you might do a lot of things, maybe something very creative. Now, it's very easy to deceive yourself if you just keep this to yourself, uh, thinking that that's secure because you design it, then you might think that this is very secure. So if you keep it private, uh, you are on the only person who knows if that's secure or not. But it's very easy to deceive yourself to thinking that something is, is secure. On the other hand, if you make it public, if for example, you publish it on the internet or something like that, then a lot of people are going to look at these algorithms and some cryptanalysis will, people will try to crack them. Now, if they do, which probably if you are designing the software and, of course, uh, you're not an expert in cryptanalysis, neither am I, um, I would probably, you would probably, that algorithm would probably be break here. So, probably broken. This is D, actually. This is the decryption algorithm. So, so what happens here is it's very easy to deceive yourself in thinking that something is very secure uh, if you are the only one looking at it. Okay, so you might think it's too secure. So it's better to keep things public because that's the only way you can actually uh, know if the this this crypto system that you design is secure or not. So there will be a lot of people that will be looking at it. Some of them will be pretty smart, and if they cannot break it, probably what's going to happen is that you, you your feeling is that that I've got this couple of encryption and decryption algorithms are probably secure. Now, the idea is this. So we should make the algorithms public. And of course, this is counterintuitive. So uh, it, got, it goes against the intuition. But why is that? So I already mentioned that. So why you want to keep the algorithms public? It's very easy to deceive yourself thinking that an algorithm is secure if you are the only one doing that. This has happened times in the industry. Some industry has kept secret uh, uh, the algorithms and somebody can reverse engineer the algorithms and crack them very easily. Why? Because 
they were the only ones looking at it. And the algorithms, the one, whatever you design, should be tested by others. Others than yourself, not your friends, not your pals, other people who are cryptanalysis, to check that they actually work. If they cannot do it, and a lot of people in the, the years pass and they cannot break it, then you probably are okay for the time being. It doesn't mean that later those algorithms are going to be broke. Maybe you will have better computers. Maybe we'll uh, find more mathematical properties of uh, those algorithms and they will be broken. And so that's why we need cryptanalysis. We need all the time people trying to break these algorithms, trying to recuperate the uh, plain text from the cipher text when you apply these algorithms. Now, so th that's an important thing, and it's a very uh, not intuitive at all that you should keep. If you are designing some kind of crypto system, you need to make it public so people know or people can test whether that's secure or not. Keep it private is a bad idea, really bad idea. And some industry has had problems with it. Uh, the DVD encryption, for example, uh, a long time ago, it was uh, broken because it was private. And so once someone reverse engineered that DVD encryption, then that was it. That was very easy to uh, crack. So this is one important principle, and I'm going to stop with that principle here for the introduction to modern cryptography. And is the Kirchhoff, uh, probably I'm pronouncing this wrong, Kirchhoff uh, principle. And he made this principle in 1883. And I'm just going to read it because this is very important. Uh, a crypto system should be secure even if the attacker, in this case is Eve, knows all the details about the system. So he knows the encryption algorithm, the decryption algorithm, all the details, with the exception of the secret key. So it should be secure even if the crypto system, if the attacker knows that. So. Uh, this is a very important principle in cryptography. Uh, it's one of the most important, and if anything you're going to take with yourself from this class, it should be this principle. Okay. So make the algorithms or the crypto system public so people can test whether or not they are secure. So these are three videos out there, one, part one, two, and three, we're basically discussing main ideas about modern cryptography. What we're going to do next is go into a little bit more details on those algorithms. And of course, the algorithms are public because we're going to study them. So everybody knows how the algorithms work. The idea is they everybody knows how they work, or at least people who study cryptography, they know how they work. Even though they know it's really hard to break them. At least some of them are. So the next video we're going to talk about a little bit more in detail. Uh, this was all the general ideas, and I hope you have a picture in your mind a little bit more clear about what cryptography uh, is. So I'll see you uh, next time.